and welcome to Gay Fat Friend and Friends, the podcast. The podcast for learners. That's right. I've learned my lesson. You guys, I'm going to start the show today instantly into housekeeping. 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 Because I learned a very valuable lesson. Never doubt Beyonce. I love Cowboy Carter now. I, I, I needed some time. I had to work through it. I mean, what? It came out last Friday, and is that when we recorded on Friday? I don't even remember, but I did not have a lot of time with it, so I had to go through and listen a couple more times, and now that I've been putting it on while I drive and putting it on while I do housework and putting it on when I exercise, you guys, this album is so good. For one thing, right off the bat, I am so ready for summer and like warm spring weather into summer which I have not been that kind of person in, I feel like, decades. Like, I lived in New York before I lived in L.A., and I was so ready to just, I don't know, leave seasons like that, right? And I lived in L.A., and then the longer you live in L.A., the more you're like, oh, I wish I wish we had a fall. I wish it would get cold. I wish it would rain for, like, four days straight instead of being sunny all the time. Although I did just see that L.A. has currently set the record for the most rain in a year since like the 1800s or something. That's crazy. I'm so glad that I finally moved away from LA and then they got rain and weather. You're welcome. You guys, I think it was me. I had to leave Los Angeles in order for you to get weather. But, um, this album is so just like windows down, volume up, driving on a country road, sunny day, probably like 76 degrees, just driving your heart out, screaming these songs. They're so good, and they're so touching and meaningful. And I've, I've always kind of said, like, I, I do this with stand-up, too. Like, if you have to explain it or if you have to know the meaning behind it to make something good, then it's probably not that good. But I'm kind of going back on that because the more I learned about who Beyonce featured on this album and the samples she used and the references she had, I'm like... Oh, that makes me like it more. (laughs) Like, I didn't so much connect with the music when I first heard it. But once I knew the history behind the music and the involvement of the people on the music, then I I just loved it that much more. Does that make sense? So, yeah, I apologize if I offended anyone or if I threw anyone off the case because (laughs) I now officially love Cowboy Carter I've listened to it, I don't know, probably 20 times. I, We got a new mattress. Rob and I will talk about it in the Rob segment. But we got a whole new bedding system, and we kind of had to redo all the storage in our basement. And so I've been working down in the basement, where I am right now, if you're watching this on YouTube, we record in our bedroom, which is in the basement. And I've fully rearranged the storage in our basement. And uh, so I put Beyonce on, and I just like – breezed through it like it's just it's the best just kind of dancing around the house tonight I will be drinking I have not had anything to drink in a couple days alcohol wise I mean I've been drinking water come on um but yeah I haven't had anything to drink in a couple days and I really want to drink some wine tonight and I think it's going to be a great just you know Nora Ephron glass of wine in the hand dancing around the living room listening to Beyonce kind of night and I'm very excited so apologies to anyone that I may have offended by saying I didn't like Beyonce's new album because I now a week later officially love it it is amazing chef's kiss so good so that's housekeeping right off the bat uh the other thing I wanted to talk about is that I'm back in Candy Crush have I talked about this you guys, I'm playing Candy Crush every day. It is addictive. I, I'm i not going to lie. I have spent money on it. Now, maybe like 2 to $4 a week. But I'm giving money to Candy Crush, and I feel like such a failure. I feel like a failure that I'm playing this game so intensely and so uh, aggressively. I just, I don't know. I just need like an outlet to play this little game in my phone, but I'm developing like a crick in my neck because sometimes I'll play for like an hour and I'm just like sitting on the sofa, staring down at my phone, getting a cramp in my hand, a crick in my neck. My jaw was like throbbing from looking straight down at my phone. This is a problem. You know what? If we can get to a point in society where all phones are destroyed and we no longer have cell phones, I could be on board with that because I'm kind of sick of devoting my face 
time to my phone. I look at my phone so much during the day. And now that I'm back in the crush, it's bad, you guys. It's bad. What I'm hoping with this story is that you can recommend something else to do. I don't know. Go for walks. Uh, take up piano lessons. I just, I'm so addicted to Candy Crush right now, and it's embarrassing. But the thing I, I've, I'm i curious about, too, I feel like I've talked about this. Have I talked about this? I apologize if I've talked about this. But why has no one done a line of candies from Candy Crush? Because if you play Candy Crush, those candies are very specific. And if they did, like, giant jelly beans and chocolate balls and stuff in the shape of the Candy Crush candies, I feel like that would make millions. I feel like people are leaving a lot of money on the table when it comes to Candy Crush. Why hasn't this happened, King? King is the maker of Candy Crush. Not, I'm not just like saying Gen Z words. Uh, but King, why are you not making actual candy? Because I think people would buy it by the millions. Because I, I know I would. I've wanted to eat the candy in Candy Crush for so long. That's another thing. I'm off sugar right now. I'm not eating sugar. So I'm kind of diving into Candy Crush so I can just look at sugar and crush it. It's stupid, I know. But I'm obsessed with Candy Crush and I can't stop. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about, and this is a thing... I've been noticing a lot lately, and as an older married man, I feel it needs to be said because I think I accidentally led someone on one time. But when you guys, like, this is for my single friends out there, but when you want to be more than just friends with someone, you have to start using the word date. Now, this hasn't happened to me in a long time. Like, I was still in L.A. the last time this happened. But as someone who now lives in Seattle and is trying to make friends, you got to start using the word date when you want to hang out with someone more than just friends. Because I've been seeing a lot on TikTok and threads and Instagram, people telling these stories about like, oh, dating in 2024 is so hard. I talked to this guy for a long time and then I asked him if he wanted to get coffee and he said, sure. And then when we got coffee, he started talking about his husband and I'm like, are you describing me? <laughs> I've never met you, but I feel like I've done this to people because I'm trying to make friends. And if I meet someone at a party or something, like granted, I don't know their situation. Maybe this person did like ultra flirt with them. Maybe they, they made out. I don't even know. But it's really hard to misread signals if you're not looking for them. And so the next time you're talking to someone and you want to see them again, more than just friends, please use the word date because just saying, hey, do you want to get coffee? That's what friends do. OK, friends get coffee and it's so hard to make friends as an adult. And so you kind of when you're in that zone trying to make friends, you kind of look for it anywhere you can. So if I make a connection to be friends, please don't take it the wrong way. I'm, I'm so sorry if I if if I or anyone I know comes off the wrong way, but please don't take it the wrong way if you say, can we get coffee? And I say, yes. And then we get coffee. And you're like, husband? It's like, I I'm sorry. I usually talk about him all the time or he's always with me. So I just assumed you knew. And then all you said was, do you want to get coffee? I keep seeing all these videos of people being like, he said he wanted to get coffee. He said he wanted to go to dinner. And then I found out he has a partner. It's like, well, did you ever use the word date? You got to use the word date, gang. Just start using the word date. It's one word. It's real easy. And just lay it on the table. Then, <laughs> then if you say, hey, do you want to go on a date? Or can I take you on a date? Or should we go on a date? And he says yes. And then you go for coffee. And then he starts talking about his husband. Well, then that's his problem. Okay? That's no longer on you. If you use the word date, uh, or if you use, you know, like a romantic situation, that's his problem if he has a partner, not yours. But if you just offer to like go to a movie or hang out and go get coffee and you don't use the word date, you could you could really find yourself in a sore situation. And I feel so bad for all these people that I keep seeing like over and over and over again, just be so sad that they keep getting led on. And it's like, well, it, also, maybe they're polyamorous and they're looking for a third. Like there's so many different um criteria not criteria there's so many different aspects to relationships and friendships and stuff like that so at the end of the day as far as i'm con concerned and i feel like a lot of people agree with this too just use the word date just ask people out on a date let's bring it back let's bring back saying hey you want to go on a date because then that at least that person knows like oh no only want to be friends they could just do it right off the bat um 
Because, yeah, it feels like that's an epidemic that's happening. And I just feel sorry for all the single people that keep getting led on or keep feeling that they're being led on by dummies like me who don't understand what's happening and accidentally agree to dates that they didn't know were dates. Does that make sense? I feel like I say, does that make sense so much? Does that make sense, though? All right. Well, that's my cracked out chaotic first segment. And I think it's time to get Robbie out here because we have so many funny stories to tell. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Little Robbie Man. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi, babe. Hi. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. How are you feeling? Good. You're not completely sore and frozen as oh. i am oh well i mean <laughs> the body is dying i'm fine um yeah oh uh, god getting older is dumb it's i don't know why we have to do it i think it's bullshit it's like paying taxes we shouldn't have to do this anymore well i mean not to be tried but i guess it beats the alternative you know but also not aging i what well, the alternative would be to die i suppose uh, but, i mean but well, yeah. we're all gonna die. But I mean, but seriously, like this this uh, slow erosion is is brutal. Yeah, it's awful. Uh, I mentioned earlier. I told the people that we got a new bed system, a new yeah. mattress, and it took so much physical work to set it up. I mean, very easy setup. Very easy setup. Yes. But it, honestly, getting rid of the body, taking out the old mattress, yeah, was what was the hardest part. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm a giant. I'm six seven. So a lot of anything that happens below, like pretty much below my waist. Whoa. Hey yo. But anything that happens below like three feet, I have to completely bend over and just activate my thighs, and uh, disassembling a bed is a lot of thigh work. A lot of kneeling. A lot of squats. A lot of kneeling. A lot of squats. I mean. We use every square inch of our home for storage. So there was a lot of stuff I had to take out from underneath the bed. Then I had to take the bed apart. We had a memory foam mattress, which we kept. So we took that out. We had to get a vacuum, uh, you know, a vacuum Ziploc suction bag to store it. So which, much thigh work. And and as much as, you know, I mean, some of it uh, I helped on, not all, but like the the You'd be amazed, actually, just how much a 15-inch height difference complicates <laughs> trying to move something together. Yeah. Like, it is a very – but, I mean, on the other hand, though, we do get the occasional perks of, like, where, you know, if you're able to lift something up high over your head, then going down the stairs is easy because you can lift up the stairs as I kind of barely support going down. Yeah. Like, there are – situations where the height thing works out but for the most part it's usually extremely difficult and it's usually uh something heavy so with that yeah. point, we're both just like barely getting words out and kind of yelling at each other that's the thing too the whole so we we got uh, a split king and each side is adjustable so it has this like really heavy delicious non-squeaky steel bed frame th to set up and it's like i said electric and it can adjust the feet and the head and it is a delight but it's pretty much i mean it is two extra long twin beds next to each other inside yeah. a king bed frame. So it all came through the mail. So like FedEx, the poor guy, the poor, poor FedEx man brought all those gigantic heavy boxes up our stairs because we live on top of a hill, brought all the boxes up the stairs and then we had to bring them down into the basement through the house. Very heavy boxes. Which is funny. Even before they arrived, I literally said, we should just have everything delivered through the, the basement. Yeah, because we have a door in our basement. So, like, he could have brought it in the basement, but and we didn't notice until he was, like, on the third of yeah, four boxes. Of course, as soon as, like, I said that days prior. Yeah. And when it ha actually happened, where was that uh, that that brain power? Gone. He, we, just boxes, boxes. Ah. I think the FedEx guy was waiting to bring all the boxes up to then ring the doorbell, but we have a ring camera doorbell. So I noticed the notification that someone was outside. And by the time I opened the door, he was like bringing up the last box. I was like, sorry. Yeah, he and was he a wait, trooper. But like, good for him because they weighed a ton. I couldn't carry them by myself. Oh, like, seriously? I had to use you. Yeah, it was that was rough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just big, carry big heavy boxes, taking a bed apart, putting a bed together. The bed was so easy to put together, especially with help. I mean, it took me 45 minutes to do one side by myself. But then when Rob joined me, less than 10. So, you know, it really does pay to have a, a tiny little man around. He can fit into those corners and just well, finish up projects. And I'm good at building furniture. I can get one of those Ikea Calyx shelves down in like You are. That's kind of your time. thing. Yeah, well, I mean, I have at this point deconstructed and reconstructed those damned <laughs> calyx and or uh expedite shelves now uh in the double digits i am just a machine well and what's funny is that when we originally moved in together in 
2012. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, because we went like lesbian fast. We moved yeah. in within the first year. <laughs> um, but when we moved in together in 2012, that was the last leg of these record shelves because you were like, you took them apart and moved them from Hayworth over to our Ogden apartment. And uh, you were putting them together and you're like, this is probably the last time I'll ever be able to take these shelves down and put them back together. Meanwhile, we've done it three more times. Uh, it's what, yeah, uh, Kirkland here. So at least twice more. Yeah. And uh, they're still kicking. I mean, all of the screws are threaded. Uh, and I feel like at this point they've just turned into kind of bolts or yeah. nails. But like, the, the, honestly, <laughs> like the, the it is funny. Like the, the construction of them is pretty sound. Like really, yeah. if you build it right, they hold themselves together really well. Just you have to make them. You have to not make the mistake I did one time. I thought I could move it by rotating it ninety degrees. They go rhombus and then yeah. they become flat. two <laughs> flat big panels and they explode all of the shelves outward in a comical, terrifying, just disaster. It is absolutely uh, not what you want. <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah, like you know, like I said, these have held up. Beyond our expectations, uh, it's almost like IKEA knows what they're doing. They right. got a they got a good future in well, that company. But it's funny because yeah, like what the two down here are the they're the um, the Calyx, which is like the updated version. Um, I have like a four by four Expedit upstairs that is probably a solid what seven years older, and it's been in uh what an additional four moves. Yeah. It is just and that one is that one's by far the best condition of all of them. That one is going to outlive all of us. Yeah. It's it's amazing. One thing you learn pretty fast living with a hoard or a collector. Hey yo. Living with a collector is how valuable shelves are and how many shelves you will need in your life. Yes. There's a, there's a lot of shelves that go into collecting. Yeah. A lot of that's a hidden cost. A lot yeah. of people don't know that. Yeah, the walls get claimed quickly. Well, the other thing that uh, setting up this bed, and I don't want to associate it with the bed because the bed is seriously divine. It's so nice. Yeah. Like having an adjustable bed is the future. Uh, ever since I was a little kid and they had I think was it Tempur-Pedic? I don't even know. But those infomercials, commercials that you could buy an adjustable bed uh, and it was always for like seniors. I was like, oh, I want an adjustable bed so bad. And now we finally have one and it is living in the future. But um our move to Seattle was, for lack of a better word, traumatic. It was, I have a lot of trauma associated with the physical move from LA up here. It was very stressful. Ugh, just thinking about it is just- Right? Like ooh. I have just a lot of like burned in acidic trauma in my body from moving from LA to Seattle. <laughs> and then we had kind of a really shitty living situation and then we moved into this house and that was really stressful too. So it was about a year, give or take, of just pure terror stress. <laughs> and uh, so doing all this, moving the bed out, moving the new beds in, setting them up, carrying boxes, moving furniture, rearranging the basement so we could store the old mattress, just ignited this old trauma response in my body. And I, I fully, I mean, I don't want to belittle actual PS, PTSD people, but like I have PTSD in my body from moving and moving furniture and stuff. Well, I feel spoiled. I had forgotten what it felt like to move for a minute. <laughs> and then I suddenly got this little bit of like a whiff of it. And you're just like, oh God, oh yeah. God, moving sucks. Cause we've oh. been in, the, yeah, we've been in this house for exactly two years now. And yeah. And yeah, it was it was nice to I mean, we didn't move for a decade. We moved in together and then we lived with each other for 10 years. And then we moved up here and we've moved twice. And so it's just like ugh, it was it's we kind of got back into the groove of not having to move for two years. Well, and also like, you know, and this is I think this is just a thing of getting older and being you know, uh, comfortable together and kind of nesting. Everything we have has expanded. Everything we have, there's more of everything. Everything yeah. we've gotten has somehow gotten bigger. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like when we first moved in together, we both had queen size beds. Yeah. Then we ended up getting a king. Of course, it had to get bigger. Yeah. You know, it's like even our TVs. When we first moved in together, I, you know, like the TVs were of a certain size. They've since increased in size. Like they twice. were like 40 inches. Yeah. We were at the 40 inch And now phase. we're at like 70. Yeah. Like this, but you know, so the world has moved on. But it's that thing of just like everything that we've done has somehow gotten bigger. Uh, and at least now the bed is in two pieces that are both of reasonable size. Although this mattress is deliciously thick. Uh, yeah. The one we have, I mean, I, I mean, I can say the name of the company. It's Big yeah. Fig Mattress. And I, I like, I'm not exaggerating. I'd be willing to bet the measurement on the actual like thickness of the mattress is probably about 13 to 14 inches. Yeah. Oh, I would say, yeah, I would say it's like 14 or 15 inches. It's, it's definitely like 
a foot plus. Yeah, I would well, say. so it's big big. Fi- big fig mattress are made for bigger people, heavier people, um, and so there's extra springs. They're reinforced. They're super thick. Uh, and it's it's funny we went from memory foam, which you you kind of sink into, and I love memory foam. And it was nice, and but like ours was also years old. Like yeah. it was time to replace anyway. Yeah, we've had it for like eight years. I think. Yeah, it was it was definitely at its time. Yeah, and it was ready to get a new one. Like we we had turned it as many times as possible, but there were like full on divots and like impressions of our body just in that mattress. Yeah. Um, but we it kept remem- it. It remembers. We kept it just in case because yeah. you never know. Uh, but yeah, these new mattresses are a good. Six inches taller than that when you're laying in it. Like the the bed is so much taller than our bedside tables now that I have to like reach over just to get something off the table like my phone. Well, and meanwhile, when we met, I was almost in a platform bed. Like I was almost on oh, the floor. Oh yeah, we. I when we moved in together, I was like, we're getting rid of that bed. That bed is going away because I need to fall out of bed. And uh, I like falling into bed. Yeah, you shouldn't have to climb out of a bed. Like, literally climb. And I don't want to crawl into bed. Like, that's the thing. It's always like we have different. Also, I'm a person who likes to uh, sit into a car uh, no, instead like of to, step into a car. And I like then to fall climb out up into a car and then fall out of a car. Yeah. So, so we have the exact opposite of where we want to put in the effort. Uh, of of doing stuff, I guess I would rather put in the effort to get out of something than the effort to get into something. Which makes no sense because you are the least morning person. Like waking you up is a trial and a tribulation. Oh, it is a chore. And the fact that you want to physically climb out of bed in the morning, it doesn't make sense. It defies all logic. Well, I mean, I don't want to, but I mean, but also the satisfaction of just kind of boof into bed, which. Uh, this bed, because of the sort of you know additional weight support that it's intended to have, I can literally l- fly into yeah. this bed, like running, <laughs> jump. It's it's amazing. Yeah, it's these been beds super are fun. amazing. Like the the yeah. fra- the adjustable frame is made out of literal steel. <laughs> uh, it can support up to like sixteen hundred pounds or something. They're, they're really it's a really it's great eleven hundred pounds. Yeah, each. and and just so much support, which I've haven't had in quite some time. Yeah, uh, especially compared to your sleigh bed. The only thing. That uh, are, is it a sleigh bed? Uh, I mean, it. I, I don't. I don't know the specific terminology. I mean, it's a low IKEA. Yeah, it's yeah. your standard IKEA. It was practically know, low, on the floor, but it was. It was like it a was, futon. Yeah, it wasn't quite platform, <laughs> but it was. It was a very low bed, though. I but mean, like the mattress was at my knee level, which is low. The only thing I, I would say would be good about that is like now that our bed is in the basement, the ceilings down here are very low. Like, um, I don't hit my head, but. I'm probably, I don't know, less than a foot away from the ceiling down here. Like these are short. These are, I think, maybe seven, seven and a half foot ceilings. I like a good 10 to 12 foot ceiling. Um, So now that we're in this taller bed, we're actually a little bit just enough closer to the ceiling that I notice it. Like laying in bed, I'm like, wow, we are close to the ceiling. Well, there is no jumping on the bed for me unless I have a bend in me because uh, standing on the bed now, my head literally touches the ceiling, which is strange. That's that's not that's not what I'm used to. (laughs) Yeah. So um, I've always said we rent this house, but if we bought it, I'm going to have the floor jackhammered out and add like a good foot to the floor of the basement. That seems almost like it's worth just getting a different house at that point. Well, I mean, that's the dream. That's the goal. Or Uh, like cutting off your legs at the knee. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so that's our new bed story. And all to say, we're so sore that at least I am. I feel hungover. Like, I feel like I tied one on last night. I keep falling asleep at weird times, and so maybe that's it, because I keep getting these weird four-hour naps, just 6 p.m. or four-hour nap. Straight into the next morning. Right? Uh, But yeah, noon, four-hour nap. Like, it's just, it's time, like, once I go down, I'm down for a good half of a normal person's sleep. Yeah. Um... And yeah, and of course, also, I have a gift for carrying um, any sort of muscle exhaustion in one part of my body, especially. I could literally be walking on my hands all day, and somehow my quads are going to hurt. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is, but my quads just take everything. Yeah, they absorb all that. They are the shock absorbers of your body. Which I guess, hey, that means I'm probably lifting with my legs. Meanwhile, uh, I can feel every single joint in my body, and I've never wanted to feel my joints this close- closely. Like, I could feel every, like creak and bend and ugh, I hate it. But yeah, but for some reason I just look like I'm 90 every time I try to stand up from somewhere because like my quads oh, yeah. just it's always the legs and me going down the stairs I look like a toddler. It's Well, you're little you kind of do that every time. How dare you? <laughs> Uh, having said that, there was something funny that happened to Rob yesterday that he oh. told me and I, I feel like you guys need to hear this story because yeah. it was, it was Comically hilarious. So I'll, adorably I'll, hilarious. I'll try to keep this, you know, as uh, 
straightforward as possible. So, okay, so yesterday I went to one of our local record stores, um, and uh, I just hadn't been to a record store in two weeks, which I usually go weekly because I'm that guy. So um, Again, life with a collector. Yeah. So go in, and I'm going by myself, which means I have time to go kind of browse the bins a bit. Um, you know, mostly I went there specifically to get the new Black Keys record. Um, while I was there, ended up uh, kind of getting swept up in the excitement of uh, there's a new record by Serpent Without Feet. Got excited about that. So anyway, going through the bins. Let me just tell you, I do not need anything by the band Garbage. I don't. I have it all. Like, we're good. Yeah, Love we, them. Uh, especially when it comes to vinyl. Yeah, I I've, think... I've been collecting them since ever. Like, literally, I have an original of most or of, of all their albums because that's when I've been collecting them. And so... Um, we. I think... Together as a couple, we've seen them together the most live. I think so. We've seen them a few times. Or like Shirley, didn't she do a solo show that we went to? No, but we've, we've seen them a couple times together, and I'd seen them a couple times before that. I've been to in-stores. I've met them. Like, it, big, big fan. Rob is a garbage super fan. Yeah. So um, anyway, for some reason, uh, like- Didn't they just release an album? Well, they released the anthology. They they released a what a record store day thing recently, and they had an album fairly recently, and they had an anthology that came out last year. Um, and they've been really, really, really great about doing these twenty year anniversary reissues of their stuff. They did it for their self title. They did it for version two point They did it for beautiful garbage. And I've literally been watching the calendar for when they've been going to do it for their fourth record, Bleed Like Me, which has never been pressed on vinyl ever. Um, I they did some singles on seven inch vinyl but never the the full record. So I was super excited about this. It's not my favorite album of theirs, but there's some good songs on it. And um, this actually completes all of their albums on vinyl just for... For our collection. And for everyone, really. Yeah. And so... Um, but I've been buying all the deluxos of the uh, reissues they've been doing, which usually are like two two discs for the album, plus a bonus disc of B-sides, plus some sort of uh, memorabilia, which, you know, like they did like a condom for one. I think they did a slip mat for one. They did posters and 8x10s and all this kind of stuff. So I was ready for that, and I've been watching and kind of waiting for this. And anyway, the nice thing about some Seattle record stores is that they kind of sometimes they stock some bootlegs, or they'll buy bootlegs, I guess, from uh, as like a used thing. So for some reason, I saw a little garbage card, and I was like, I don't need anything from there. But you know what? I felt compelled and i sort of went over there looked at it well also because recently you've been getting like you got a bunch of lana del rey bootlegs yeah well and so, like you're you're like well we're in seattle and they sell bootlegs on vinyl i might as well check the garbage section well and especially like in seattle alice in chains tends to have boot bootlegs in you know most stores um and so, rob still likes alice in chains i love alice in chains <laughs> so um well hey when in rome like yeah. we're in the right place so anyway um I went to the bin because I just felt oddly compelled, and um, they had almost nothing. But they did, however, have a single disc version of Bleed Like Me, first time on vinyl pressing ever. And I was like, excuse me? I did not know this was coming. And I'm a person who, like, knows this stuff. I tend to watch release news and all this. And plus, I think I bought, like, two records directly from them. Why am I not on their mailing list? Why did they not email me about this ahead of time? Um, then I find out, so uh, so I go to their website immediately and look, and I find out there is a two disc version of this that has like the album of, or the tra the bonus disc of B sides, which is what I really want um, if I'm going to get the record. Uh, <laughs> the record store I'm in does not have it. The website says everything is instantly sold out, so now I'm convinced that this was like a super limited thing. I'm really worried. Um, so first thing I do is I buy the record in that store immediately because I have to get it. I asked them if they got the deluxe version. They did not. Um, and, you know, at this whole time, I'm just talking about this record and how excited I'm about it. Uh, and then as I'm checking out, I look down at my <laughs> hoodie that I'm wearing, and I'm wearing a fucking garbage hoodie. <laughs> Literally, it says garbage written right across it in their font on the back. Uh, it's for their 20 Years of Queer tour that uh, Todd and I saw at the Greek. And... um. The guy I'm, working at the record store is like big and, fan. Well, I literally looked down and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm I cannot believe I'm totally that guy wearing this this hoodie while buying a garbage record and asking about them because seriously, like I had no idea this record was even out." Um, and and he's like, "Yeah, he's like I was gonna say big fan." I was like, "This is <laughs> oh god, like that's the worst thing you could have said." And I was just like, uh, "I wish I'd just taken it off. I would rather been cold." Uh, and so anyway, um, I get to the car, I then hop on my phone immediately, start looking a little bit more thoroughly to see if this deluxe situation was only through their website, if it was really sold out everywhere, if it's limited. I find it in another record store in town. They put on hold for me. Now I have to go back to, to uh, the, the store that I was at before and try to return this one. So now I'm that garbage guy who was like, 
wearing the hoodie, buying the thing. Now I'm coming back. I'm literally returning it two minutes later. I just look like a crazy person. Um, but on the other hand, though, this morning I went to the other record store, picked up the copy of their album, and I did not wear a garbage hoodie to buy Good a job. garbage record. I was not that guy. Good job, buddy. Um, also, <sighs> we should say we do not condone this behavior of buying something and then checking someone else and then returning. We don't do stuff like that because no. these are – Especially when it comes to record stores, these are all small businesses, so we would never. So, like when Rob went back in, he was like, "You can just give oh, me store credit." Yeah, I literally said, "I was like, if you if we need to do an exchange, I will keep looking around." There was other stuff I was considering getting, and they were like, "It's cool, dude. We can do a return on this." Yeah, but like I am very much a person where like if I have a second copy of something, it's like, well, I guess I have to sell that as used or trade it in or like you know, yeah. it's it's a thing where I I do not condone that kind of yeah. Thing. Ultimately, as shoppers, we only believe in like price matching and comparing and shit like that when it's like mega corporate like Target or Walmart or Amazon. Well, And normally I'm a person who does my homework. Like I yeah. know when I go to a record store if there's an indie exclusive color version or an alternate piece of artwork or if I should have bought it through their website. Like I am very attuned to this. And, and so, yeah, this was a record that literally just kind of swept the leg, so to speak. I was shocked <laughs> yeah. that it existed. And also, it was something that I've literally been looking forward to since they did their first reissue of their first album, what, five years ago. So, like, I have literally been waiting for this for half a decade. So I was so hopped up on new and shiny and excited that, like, I... I'm surprised I didn't keep that copy as a backup copy until I got my other copy, but yeah. I behaved. Well, and we've done that before in the past. I think we did it on like record store day or something, but like we'll grab, we are the type of people that will like grab something we want because we're excited. We saw it in a store and we'll pay for it. And then we'll later find out, Oh, they sell this everywhere and it's not that limited or, you know, like yeah. we do shit like that all the time. Safety copies. They have, we are, we are pure consumers. <laughs> <sighs> yes. And again, you guys, like I said, Life with a collector. It's, it's you know, no fun and games. It's a full-time job. Seriously. Right? You got to put the work in. Who knew record collecting was such serious business? <laughs> but it is. Uh, but yeah, I love that story. Uh, bought, th bought this record, went back to return it, r realized the whole time that you're wearing a garbage hoodie. You're just a garbage super fan. Seriously. Well, and, but like also like the least informed super fan, which is just so like, just not, not the image I need to be keeping here. But um, but yeah, everyone was really great about it. I actually called him uh, from the car just because I had to tell him how embarrassed I was <laughs> by this whole process. You can't wear the shirt of the band you're going to see. <sighs> um, all right. Well, garbage super fan, I think we should move on to our final segment, which is you watch the your order. Watch your order. Did you I have here. box? My can I talk? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just curious. I have here my trusty blue rip and dip shoebox filled with America's favorite fast food restaurants. There is only one restaurant left in this box, and I'm a completionist, so I thought we would kill this box, and then I will reload. Gotcha. Thank sorry. you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but without further ado, let's reach in and take out the last restaurant, which is, wait, it is in here. Oh, yeah. Football. Pizza Hut. Bam, 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 bam. I love Pizza Hut. Good toss. Um, I think Pizza Hut is probably my most favorite nostalgic childhood restaurant experience. Millennials will never, ever feel the rush that we felt from I mean, the Pizza Huts of the early 90s. Yeah, Pizza Hut 1991, come on. Those red I mean, plastic cups. The red plastic cups, pitchers of soda. Stained glass lights. The stained glass lights, the checkered tablecloths, the... Mrs. Pac-Man machines. Street Fighter 2 for me. Oh, is that what you had? Street Fighter 2 and a jukebox. I think ours was like Galaga and Mrs. Pac-Man. Or is it Miss Pac-Man? Well, I mean, obviously we had some more retro stuff before, but I feel like Street Fighter 2 was the real like stranglehold of my Pizza well, Hut once it showed up. And ours was the tabletop. Oh, the uh, cocktail machines. Is that what that's called? Yes, those are cocktail table machines. Yeah, no, because we did have, I think, a Pac-Man... Uh, cocktail machine because yeah and it, it rotates the screen for whichever you're facing ah, i yeah. love those um and then also the best thing was book it we had the book it program uh, and you've got a personal pan pizza for reading books yeah and come on as a voracious nerd reader type uh at the time it was like i mean it was a what a time to be alive free pizza <laughs> for for being a nerd 
I posted, I forget, on like threads or Instagram or something, or maybe I talked about it on TikTok, but I talked about Book It, and they still do it. I think you can still get Book It pizzas. They do. Well, and okay, did you ever get to go to a Pizza Hut during like their lunch buffet? Like, oh, because yes. I only got to do that. Like, uh, so there was a Pizza Hut uh, where I grew up in um, the Antelope Valley, in uh, where there was a Pizza Hut right next to my orthodontist. And so, like, it was a thing where I would go and get my braces tightened, and then before it would be too painful for me to do anything before involving my teeth, in. you would go to Pizza Hut for the lunch oh. buffet, and, you like, I was with all these adults that were able to go there during the day. I never got to do that normally, and right. I was a growing teen who could pack that away. Well, and bread is already your favorite food, Seriously. so you could just eat 20 oh. breadsticks. It was, it was the best. Unlimited marinara. It was such a dream. Like, that was honestly, like, the coolest. It was like a weird trip to Disneyland midday. Seriously, Pizza Hut is su- was such a childhood treat. Like, oh. it was, ugh, it was so good. And for me, Friday. Friday night at like 6 37 uh, p.m. is like the best Pizza Hut. Like, I still say it today. Can we do a Pizza Hut night on a Friday? Because, like, oh, I just love the feeling of having Pizza Hut on a Friday evening. And then you've got movies to watch, and you're like, we're going to have us a good old fashioned Friday. Oh, yeah. Um, but what I was going to say about the buffet is uh, so a thing about me is I love soggy stuff, I love soggy cereal. I like sometimes with certain cereals, I'll pour them a milk on and leave it for five minutes before I even take a bite. Like I love soggy cereal. And the other thing I love is a soggy salad. I love a salad just drenched in dressing, just like a slaw full of. Yeah. Like almost like a slaw, but like with a regular dinner salad. I just love a saucy, soggy salad. And this is again where we completely differ. Both of us. Like, <laughs> yeah. I am a. Well, I you am just a, don't like sauces, really. But I'm like a crunchy texture kind of like I want like if it's bread even I want like a good crispy kind of you know edge to it I'm like yeah uh, crunch crunch is like one of my big motivators I think meanwhile I love a soggy salad and the Pizza Hut Caesar salad on the salad bar lunch buffet was always so icy cold and perfectly soggy my mouth is watering I want it right now it's so good Uh. So Ugh, well, I miss the soggy Caesar from the pizza buffet. And then they would also do things that they didn't offer on their normal menu. Like, um, really? Well, in St. Louis, uh. like you could get like toasted ravioli and stuff. Oh, but, um, yeah, man, I miss that buffet. So orders, let's yeah. talk about orders. So yeah. obviously as a kid, personal pan pizza, um, the way to go. Yeah. And I think you maybe get one topping on it. So I would probably always do like sausage. I was like, my family didn't do pepperoni growing up because pepperoni to white people in the Midwest is spicy. Uh, oh. and my dad can't do a hint of spice. My dad can't even do black pepper. So, um, that's crazy. Yeah. I no pepperoni idea. was too spicy and pizza Hut has two different kinds of sausage. They have pork topping, which is literally just ground pork fried. Yeah, like it's like the, the crumble. Yeah. And then they have sausage. So my dad would always get pork topping. Uh, so that's what probably what I would get on my personal pan bucket pizza, maybe. What okay. about you? Uh, pepperoni. I was a I was a pepperoni guy growing up, uh, and um, yeah, that that would have been like the kid order would have been, yeah. you know, the personal pan pizza. Like it's just like the the crust to pizza ratio is just mm. it's mm, so good, so good. Pizza Hut has the best pan pizza. Um, yeah. I love Domino's, but Pizza Hut has the best pan pizza for, for a mass produced nationwide chain. Like honestly, Pizza Hut just Ugh. defined I think what a lot of us know pizza to be yeah like that's the thing it's like and, and that's the thing, I guess if you tell ask me to define a pizza it's going to be Pizza Hut because that's what my baseline is yeah well and we didn't have Domino's growing up like I didn't have mm. Domino's until I was like in college so um but now as an adult my Pizza Hut order is a regular you know full-size pan pizza sausage mushroom extra cheese like that's just that's my Pizza Hut order it's got to have extra cheese it's got to be a pan pizza, and it's so good. And then breadsticks, obviously. The breadsticks at Pizza Hut are just next level. They're their own thing. It's almost like they're deep fried. Like, they put so much oil in the pan when they bake them. There's almost like a twice-cooked element to them or something. Yeah. It's... and they're just – they're made in the pans that – are like, it's the exact same crust as a pan pizza. So it's just breadstick but they're also, like, seasoned to death with all that cheese topping on top. Well, it's not even like... cheese. It's like – I mean, I guess there's, like, Parmesan sprinkles. There's Parmesan, but there's but the magic the... dust or whatever, Isn't right? It fairy dust? Fairy dust. Whatever, yeah, they have, they have Other like th- thing. Another thing we like to do is watch the Pizza Hut training videos from the 70s and 80s on YouTube. The best. Uh, if you just want to feel nostalgic and have a laugh, just Google Pizza Hut training videos from the 80s. They're so funny. Like, 
I, I feel, I forget the guy's name, but it's like Jeff and Sally or something. And Sally is training Jeff how to be an employee. And it's just, it's so funny. I was like, my mom always tells the story of my uncle when he was a teenager, worked at a pizza hut in uh, San Antonio, Texas. And um, while he was working there one night, he was robbed by samurai sword i oh, think god. It, was, it was either that or a machete and but i oh, want god that's but, terrifying but i want to say it was actually like a very long kind of ornate blade and uh he and the rest of the staff were uh wa- well they were i think ushered into the walk-in and locked in there for that's the night terrifying. Um, yeah uh but it's funny because like that's the story my mom loves to tell and i'm like that is weird but i mean at yeah. least no one was hurt um but yeah so i guess my adult Order. Your adult pizza order is is kind of all over the place. Yeah, I I shake it up because I, I I love the pan element, but also I'm I'm a normal you know uh, hand tossed yeah, person when it comes tossed. to a full size pizza, hand tossed it just makes sense for me. Um, but yeah, like I usually do uh, two of the three toppings. I do uh, pepperoni, bell pepper, and mushroom. I usually do two of those three, any sort of variety of them. I don't ever get all three for some reason though. Uh, yeah. and it's um, almost like a supreme but no black olives because you hate black olives yeah and like no onions i mean i don't mind onions on pizza as much now but like yeah. as a kid that would have been like a deal breaker um breadsticks or death if they literally if i order a pizza and i say oh yeah and i order a breadsticks and they're like oh we're out of breadsticks cancel the order i'm going somewhere yeah. else um, and we've been burned not by them forgetting our breadsticks but by, by forgetting the marinara which i'm a person who orders like Four or five extras yeah. at this point, and like it's just the to... pizza hut dipping sauce marinara for the breadsticks is like, it literally half the reason you order yeah. the breadsticks. Yeah, and honestly, it's a thing where like before I walk out, I will make sure it's there. I don't care if I have to pay for a whole bunch of them. Oh, I yeah. will have this dipping sauce because it is the best. And of course, like part of the dining experience was having it come to you like molten hot, mm-hmm. like steaming forever, like you burn your face off. Yeah. The best. Um, and then um, this is the thing that I'm upset about that, that uh, Pizza Hut since taken off their menu, but I discovered them uh, fairly recently. Up I mean, here, wasn't it? I think we got them in LA too. I don't remember. But um, they had these things called K Papas, which are basically like potato cheese. Do they have any jalapeno in them at all? Yeah. Yeah, they're, tater, they're just they're tater spicy tots. Spicy tater tots. They're tater tots with pepper jack cheese like mixed in with them. Yeah, but they're still a tater tot form. And they were so good. They're delicious. Um, and I would actually usually get like what two or three orders of them because yeah. like one I would eat when I ate the pizza the first time, and then the other ones would just go in the fridge, and then they would get popped in the air fryer for reheat. Really easy to reheat. Like so, so good. So honestly, if there is a valid replacement for anyone that loved K Papas in like your grocery freezer that I'm not keen to. Please tell me because yeah, nothing hits quite like they a did. jalapeno cheddar uh, tater tot somewhere. Please let us know. But yeah, but it was like a really good. Um, it was kind of like a smooth, uh, like almost like a mashed potato. No, More... it was tater tot. Was it? Was yeah. it that level of a yeah. dice? Okay, yeah, it was tater tot. It's, it feels like it's been so long. I know. Well, that's the other thing. I don't want to like dogpile on Seattle because I feel like I talk shit a lot. But <laughs> we are in a Pizza Hut desert. Mm. Like, if you, it's so funny. One time I was like. Let's see if they maybe opened a new Pizza Hut or something and one popped up on the map. And I was like, oh, my God, there's a Pizza Hut in the city. It is literally a Pizza Hut stand at the stadium. Yeah. For some reason, that's on Google Maps. For some reason, that comes up when you Google Pizza Hut. I was so mad. Which, honestly, like, if on a Saturday when there was no game in session, if I could park, walk the half mile into the stadium and buy a personal pan pizza, I might do it. Yeah. I might do it. Well, and if that, they were open. I mean, we were kind of in a Pizza Hut desert in L.A. too because yeah. they were all really like either really south or like really far east in Hollywood. For a minute, we had no delivery option for yeah. Pizza Hut at all. For but, a and long then, time. Then I think they finally expanded their delivery situation, but it was like a solid hour you were but waiting. But the treat was, uh, if you live in L.A., if you remember, the Taco Bell on Vine used to be a Taco Hut and you could get – Personal pan pizzas and breadsticks or Taco Bell items. Um, And I feel like the Taco Huts, it's usually like a kin Taco Hut or like a a kin Taco Bell. Like you don't usually get the Pizza Hut, you know, sector. I think Um, they're the biggest hassle for them to to both like – Make and keep fresh since they're yeah. they're all the time stamped and they have to toss but them a certain time. They uh, that Taco Bell since dropped the Pizza Hut and it's just a Taco Bell only, which is fine. Well, and that was a slow, torturous process too because it used to be like no Pizza Hut after eleven, then it was like no Pizza Hut after nine, and then always like, out of breadsticks. Yeah, and then they're like no Pizza Hut, and it's like oh yeah. well, we all saw that coming, but yeah. uh, doesn't make it any easier. 
But yeah, Seattle, unfortunately, is a Pizza Hut desert. I mean, I think the closest one is like almost an hour away. It's so far away. Yeah, it's, it's in, yeah, it's in Edmonds. And I hate when people are like, oh, there's so many good pizza options in Seattle. You don't get it. Pizza Hut is very specific. It is a thing you crave specifically. Right. I'm not just talking. It's kind of like emos. I'm not talking about pizza as a whole when I'm talking about Pizza Hut. I am specifically saying I want Pizza Hut pizza. Yeah. Well, it's like, uh, you know, um, in Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. It's that thing of like, well, yeah, you can get a burger, but like a White Castle burger is so specifically yeah. White Castle. And it's so funny because if you say to me, like, imagine a burger, I would never imagine a White Castle burger. Yeah. But- if you said, hey, White Castle, I'd be like, yeah, that's specifically that. And until I get White Castle, you cannot substitute a burger for that. It's yeah. not going to scratch the edge. It, I mean, it's even as fine a point as like Domino's versus Pizza Hut. Because yeah. you can get a delicious pan pizza at Domino's, but their sauce is different. Their sausage is different. Like the dough tastes different. It's all different. So if yeah. you're going to say we're going to Pizza Hut and then you take me somewhere else. Or like if you're going to say, oh, there's no Pizza Hut, but at least there's Pagliacci's or something. And be like. It's not the same. All pizza is not created equal. Well, it's because we often joke about that when it comes to emos. Like, emos, I barely consider pizza, but I love it. Yeah. Like, I absolutely, if you if you give me emos, I'm thrilled because I think it's delicious. But, yeah, if you tell me, just, hey, we're going for pizza, and you take me to emos, I'll it's be happy because I like emos. <laughs> but, like, yeah, it, I would understand, though, if someone felt betrayed. Yeah. Because that's not really pizza to a lot of people. That, like that's your, emos. Your mind's eye is seeing that delicious triangle from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with pepperoni and gooey cheese. Totally. And like, so that's what pizza looks yeah. like. And but yeah, it's, I definitely feel like so many of us though like it which is so funny cuz like the I and Pizza Hut always part, did partnerships with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles which is very smart marketing. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, like it's so funny cuz those pizzas they never lined up. Like Pizza Hut Pizza does not look like TMNT pizza at all, but for some reason forever linked yeah. to me. Like it's just what they are. And now all those beautiful Pizza Hut buildings, which yeah, that's the other thing. Architecturally, they were so specific, and now they're no, all like dentist, insurance. Dentist offices. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> now you can get your insurance from an old Pizza Hut. I wonder if it still smells the same. It has to, unless they like gut, well, they, I, they I imagine bleach the walls. They had to get rid of the carpet, I imagine. But yeah, like they would have to do some serious, like oregano is just, that's a, that's a durable smell. Yeah. So if you live near a Pizza Hut and you can actively have Pizza Hut, I just, I hope that you hug it tight and appreciate it for what it is because you could be like us and live in a major metropolitan city that has zero Pizza Huts. It's sometimes a living hell. Yeah, it, it's weird. <laughs> but I'm currently on, a, you know, a bit of a diet trying to lose weight. So it does help in that aspect because we can't just run out and break my diet and get Pizza Hut. Well, and like lately whenever we get pizza, I usually order from a local chain that, yeah. you know, is very Seattle. Um, but yeah, but like when Pizza Hut, uh, you know, is what you need, it's what you're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a great what's your order um, and a great episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. I can't I, wait for the reload. Right. I, I have to go through and, and reload the box. Honestly, I might like add some restaurants I did at the beginning back in so I can hear what your order is, because your order is different at a lot of places from mine. Like we don't yeah. eat the same thing everywhere. So I am curious to to see what you would eat at other restaurants. But yeah, I don't know if we eat the same thing almost really anywhere. I mean, McDonald's is pretty similar. But. We we I will eat things that you will eat. You almost never eat things that I will eat. That's, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, given me being a, a picky, picky person. Picky, picky eater. But Well, that was episode 13. Thank you guys so much for listening, babe. Thanks for being here once again. Thank you for having You're me. You're pretty it's, much a permanent co-host now. <laughs> hey, it's you know I, I'm still honored to be invited back. I think if I actually do have a guest, you'll also be here, so there'll be three of us. I'll just be standing over you <laughs> both. Just ah. You'll still fit in frame. You're tiny. Just um, a floating head in the middle. But yeah, thank you. And thanks to everyone watching. And um, we'll see you on the next one. All right. I love you guys. Goodbye. Bye.